Yesterday we celebrated one of the 12 great feasts, which is the Feast of the Transfiguration of our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, as I mentioned the other evening, uh, this feast is important to me because when the first parish that we founded, that I founded, was done with just my family at the beginning. Foster was there, me, my son Tony, and Tony. And that was it. We began the mission that way. And it grew, and uh, it's still there to this day. In fact, yesterday on the feast day of the parish, the Holy Transfiguration in the Wheaton area of Illinois, Warrenville, Illinois, um, the pastor, my successor, Father Wilbur Ellsworth, was elevated to archpriest. And also, uh, Brad Nassif, you may have heard of Brad Nassif. He's an uh, Orthodox scholar, very evangelical in heart. And uh, he was teaching at North Park College for quite some time. I understand he's no longer doing that. But uh, he was ordained to diaconate. And so it's always great to see more fruit coming from the fruit of our efforts so many years ago. 34 years ago or something like that, we began that at Wheaton College. And so thanks, thanks be to God for that. I'd like to deal a bit with the Transfiguration today. The Gospel is begging to be preached on because it's speaking about the Eucharist. But I'm going to deal with the Transfiguration. Yesterday, indeed, we celebrated this great feast, and St. Matthew describes it this way. Now, after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, led them up on a high mountain by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. Then Peter answered and said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, let us make here three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and suddenly a voice came out of that cloud, saying, This is my beloved Son. Hear him. And when the disciples heard him, they fell on their faces and were greatly afraid. But Jesus came and touched them and said, Rise, do not be afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus alone. Now as they came down from the mountain, Jesus commanded them, saying, Tell the vision to no one until the Son of Man is risen from the dead. The Greek word for transfigured in this account is the word metamorphosis. I suspect if you look at the icon that's on the stand in the back, if it's in Greek, it will say that as well. The metamorphosis of our Lord. On Mount Tabor that day, Peter, James, and John saw this metamorphosis, this great change in their master. Although remaining fully human, the glories of the divine nature within shone forth even through his human nature. It was made visible to his followers that day, and his human body began to glow, we're told, like the sun. You can imagine looking right into the sun. That's what it was like. His human nature... Our human nature that he shared was a glow like the sun, a glow with God's glory. Now, what does that mean to us? What's the meaning of all of this to us? The Lord's transfiguration reveals two realities. The first reality is who Jesus Christ is. Who his identity, what is his identity? He is indeed fully human. The disciples knew that as they walked up the mountain. He is everything we are, just as human as you and I. But also in the blinding light of the transfiguration, Peter, James, and John, and we, can make no mistake of thinking that he's simply that, that he's only a human. Human though he is, he's obviously much more. Atop the mountain that day, the Lord shone in the glory of the divine nature. For a moment, the veil was pulled back. And they, Peter, James, and John were unable to see what was going on there all the time, but not able to see it because of their sin and their fallenness. That's true of us as well. But Peter, James, and John were able to see the glories of the divine nature. And to make the significance of this great event even more clear, the Father speaks from the cloud of glory, the Shekinah, as the rabbis called it, the divine energies. The Father speaks and says, This is my beloved Son. Who in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Hear him. Brethren, the transfiguration makes it perfectly clear who our Lord Jesus Christ is. He's God the Son, eternally born of the Father, outside of time, 
the born of the Virgin Mary in time as a human, fully God from all eternity, fully human from the point of his incarnation in the womb of the Theotokos. As St. Paul put it in Colossians 2, he said, in Christ, the whole fullness of the Godhead is present bodily. He's human bodily, and he's divine, the whole pleroma, the whole fullness of the Godhead. Christ is the radiance of God's glory, St. Paul says over in Hebrews chapter 1. Christ is the very radiance of God's glory. If God's glory is radiant, Christ is that radiance. This is the Lord who died and rose again for us. What love God has for you and I, brother. When he himself come, came among us, became fully one with us, to suffer death with us, and to bring us to resurrection glory. Let us today worship him and lovingly serve him. For he is eternally born of the Father, and he has become human for you and I. And therefore, we can share in his glory, which leads to the second reality that we see in the transfiguration. That is the reality of our destiny in him. Firstly, the reality of who he is. Now the reality of who we are in union with him. Through union with this glorious Lord, we too are able to shine with God's glory. That's our destiny, brethren. Think about that. We're called to a destiny that's far more than what we see around us. We're called to a destiny which is to shine with the very eternal energies of God. That's what we are called to attain in union with him by grace and faith, faithfulness to him. This is our destiny, our grand calling, to be transformed and glorified by the majestic splendor of God himself. St. Luke's account tells us that not only was the body of our Lord glowing that day, but it says that Moses and Elijah, who were speaking with him in Luke's account, as in Matthew, their bodies were glowing as well. Moses, who had died and was buried, was still glowing with God's glory. Elijah, who never died, who was taken into the fiery, in the fairy chariot into heaven directly, he was too was shining with God's glory. Theirs was a derived glory. The glory of Moses and Elijah came from the Lord that they were worshiping at that point. And that's true of us as well. This is God's assurance that we who cling to Christ will be. Indeed, if we could but see right this moment, we are being united to his glory. His glory is beginning to shine through us as we let it, as we are faithful to him. He will shine through us just as he did Moses and Elijah. As St. Peter said, we're called to be partakers of the divine nature. Think about that. We can never be God by nature. But by his grace and his love, he makes us God himself. By grace, by energy, by energy, by infusing us through the glorified humanity of Christ that we partake of here at this table. He infuses us with that very shining glory, the Shekinah, the energies of God. Not only are we united to Christ in spirit, but in body as well. Every area of our life must be submitted to him so that every area of our life can glow with the glory of God. That's our calling. That's our challenge. As individuals and as a parish, we're called to let God shine through us, through our human nature, through our very fallen humanity. He has come to heal it and to fill us with himself. Wondrous things are happening here today, brethren, as we in this very liturgy process into the very throne room of our God himself in this Holy Eucharist. God is speaking to us, calling us to his transfigured son, telling us that if we faithfully obey him to our very last breath, we too will continually grow in the splendor of God's glory. And God is uniting us to his glorious son, our Lord Jesus Christ, that we might shine brilliantly in a world that is full of darkness, so that we may metamorphosize it, so that we may transfigure it, let us in faith receive Christ today in this Eucharist, and then let us determine to go forth, to shine forth in his glory, so that God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit may be glorified in you and in me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Christ is in our midst. He is and shall be.